Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Technician A here on the What You Need to Know show. Uh, we're going to change some oil and transmission fluid in this 2015 Honda. Uh, this one has a uh, four cylinder in it. Uh, what we have here on the front is the uh, dipstick. Check to see what your oil level is before you change it. That way you might be able to know if you're losing oil. Maybe have a leak, maybe burning it. It looks pretty good right there in the middle of the hatches. All right. And we have our cap over here. This one tells you what oil we're going to be using today, 020. And I don't like to put the cap on the latch. So you can't put the cap, go without shutting the hood without putting your cap on there. Just a little trick. But uh, your transmission fluid is over here. Behind the positive cable, down, we've put a little bit of blue tape on there. You can see the blue tape. All right. This is what it looks like. You're not measuring it with it. This is only for fill. This is only for filling. We'll place that right there, too, so we don't forget it. All right, and we're going to raise the vehicle. We're lucky to have a lift here at uh, Festo's. Big shout out to Greg Festo. So 17 and a ratchet wrench is all that you need to change your oil and your transmission fluid. Here we have the drain plug for the engine. Uh, here we have the oil filter. Uh, you may need a special tool to get it off depending on how tight it is. I've already broke this loose. It was it was hand tight. Somebody did a good job. They lubed the seal before they put it on. This is key for the next oil changer that comes behind you. Uh, it allows them to remove the filter without having to destroy it. But uh, it also gives your car a good wet start if you fill your filter and lube the seal. So uh, we're going to drain these fluids out and we have a portable drain here. So I got a nice big head on it so it'll catch all these fluids. Try to gauge yourself with it a little bit because it's going to jump out and it's not going to come straight down. If you're not ready for it, you make a big mess. There you go. Now, I've always been told, don't sit there and watch the oil drain, so find something to do while you're doing it, right? We'll scoot it over a little bit and break loose the oil filter to get that started draining, too. And crack that one loose at the same time, get that one started. While they're doing that, you maybe crack loose your transmission drain right here on the front of the transmission pan. Alright, that's nice and free. And before you drain a transmission, or even an engine for that matter, you might want to see if you can fill it back up before you're in, before you're done. So let's go ahead and crack that filled plug loose on the side over here. Yes. So we can fill it up once we're done. Or check the fluid. This is where the fluid comes out while you run the transmission. On the side of the transmission right there. Basically, you fill it from where we pulled the plug, and as it runs and it's warm, it will run out the hole where the bolt is. Be careful, sometimes the oil is hot. This one's cooled down a little bit. Make sure your gasket on your bolt is nice, that you don't have any scarring or anything on the aluminum washer. You don't want to leak. This engine has a bit of a leak right here. It looks like it might be leaking around the top of the oil pan at the rear by the transmission or the rear seal. Or maybe, maybe something in that area, if not the rear seal. 
sometimes you can't tell what it is until you get behind the flywheel Let's see all right here we have our filter one thing I like to do is a no dry start so I'll fill the filter a little bit do it over your pan so you don't make a mess but get the oil into the filter and just fill the wick area up to the top and use that little extra to Lube the seal. Make sure you didn't double gasket, or you're not going to double gasket the oil filter. Make sure it's all clean. There's O-ring is gone. Lots of people have done it. It looks like it's a a spot. It's supposed to take the seal, but now it's another seal. The oil will spray out. Wipe off your area so you can tell if it's leaking. After you finish your job, filled it up. Now we're going to drain the transmission. Caught it. Here's the drain plug. It actually has a magnet on the end of it. There's a little bit of metal on there. Pretty much normal. It's just a little bit of a fuzz. Not bad. All right, so we're just about drained out there. We've already pulled the, uh, or here's the sight bolt. You can get a shot of this over here. This is this is where the fluid will run out once it's full while running. Now, if it does it while it's sitting still and the engine is off, that doesn't mean much. That you're still going to be low. You have to start this and run it. So what I like to do is. Pull that out, make sure it can come out. This is where we're going to measure it. Put it back in and fill up to the point of where it'll start to trickle a little bit. And that way I know I can start it and it won't be dry. And then we're going to get it running and pull the plug back out. And the fluid level will go down because it's filling into the torque converter. The torque converter is pretty big. And it takes a few quarts to fill it up. Put our drain plug back. Not too tight. You want to change it again later. You don't want to have to change a pan because you stripped it. Now for the fill process. So here's our old cap. We're done with that. We have a fill funnel. It's pretty far to get down in there. And uh, we'll start with three quarts. You are supposed to pour it like this. <laughs> Allow for the air pocket. Okay. We'll leave that funnel in there for right now. We've got three and a half quarts in it, so it's wet. We can start it. The pump will have something to prime itself on and uh, we're going to put some oil in this. I think it calls for under five quarts. But we're going to fill it until we see it on the stick. This is a five quart jug. So it should be like right at four quarts right there. Let me give it a check. Yep, 
right up to the top. Once we fire it up with the filter, being that I filled it a little bit, it's not going to take too much, but it's probably going to put it right into the middle of the cross hatches. All right, we've started it now. We're waiting for the oil light to go off. And then we're gonna shut it back off and check the oil. Let it wait 30 seconds or so. Make sure everything's drained back into the crankcase and you can check it with the stick. You can't take the reading when you first pull it out because that's with the engine running. Engine running oil will be higher. You can see it's right at the cross hatches. I'm gonna put just a dab more in there. And it looks like it brought it right up to the top of the hatches. So it's right on the money. Always make sure to push that down to engage the O-ring. It is the seal. And tighten your cap firmly, but not over tight. You do want to take it back off later. Alrighty. I'm going to start it back up again, and uh, we're going to check our transmission fluid. And wait to see it come out of the hole. This is our fourth port. All right, it's just now starting to trickle out. All right, now that we've uh, seen the fluid run out of this transmission here into our transmission pan that we have in the floor, um, I've capped it off, and uh, it's time to take out the funnel because we're not going to be using that anymore. And put our new dipstick in here we have from Honda. dipstick tube cap. This is not what you read it with. The, the, the bolt is what we just did. Uh, taking the bolt out and letting it run and letting the hot fluid escape from where the bolt was. This is just for filling purposes only. When it's full and running it, it will come right out the side right here. So you want to try and get your hand in there and get it capped off as soon as you can. Try not to get yourself with the hot fluid. And uh, if you got brake clean, spray it off. If not, just wipe it down and you'll be okay. And uh, we can show how to reset the uh, reminder light for the oil change. fills are shut and your check-ins there you go what you need to know how to change oil on a night or 2015 Honda Civic